How to quit your job without giving notice. In all U.S. states except Montana, employees are presumed to be at-will employees. This means that, unless you have a written contract, you have the right to quit whenever you want, for any reason, or even for no reason at all. However, many employers require that you provide two weeks' notice when you quit. If you don't, the employer may refuse to give you a reference, or withhold payment of accrued leave. This means that if you want to quit your job without giving notice, you need to carefully evaluate your company's policies and make sure it won't cost you more than it's worth. 1. 2. Drafting a formal letter. Consider talking to someone in human resources first. There may be options available to you if you want to quit without giving notice because you have a personal or family crisis, or because you're the victim of workplace harassment. If you have a problem with your work environment, such as an abusive boss or coworker, make sure the person with whom you speak is not involved with or connected to the situation. Explain your reasons for wanting to leave immediately, and see if any accommodations can be made. For example, you may be allowed to work out a notice by working from home. However, if your work is not the type of thing you can do remotely, such as if you work on an assembly line, this may not be an option. Make sure this meeting will be kept confidential. You don't want everyone knowing you're going to leave until you do so. Otherwise, there might be some backlash. Search for example letters. If you're unsure how to compose your letter, you may be able to find samples online that will help guide you. Avoid copying a sample verbatim, though. It might not fit your situation. Try to find more than one sample. Read them carefully so you understand the substance well enough to make it your own. You typically don't necessarily want your letter to sound deformal or canned. However, if you're delivering the letter to an abusive or problematic boss, a canned letter may be appropriate. Use traditional business letter format. As tempting as it may be to fire off an I quit email, a traditional letter is a better way to go. Even though you're not giving any notice, it shows that you respect your employer. You typically can find a business letter template on any word processing application. Using that will make formatting your letter much easier. If your employer has a dedicated human resources department, create two identical letters. One should be addressed to your boss, the other to the head of human resources. Include your personal address on the letter, along with any additional non-company contact information such as your personal phone number or email address. Maintain a courteous tone. Regardless of your real feelings about your boss or your job experience, courtesy makes a better impression. Being polite and professional will make it easier to accept your resignation. State the exact date on which you want your employment to end. Don't say, effective immediately, or, effective at the end of this week. If you're writing the letter on September 14th and you expect your last day to be September 16th, write, I am writing to resign my position, effective September 16th, apologize for not being able to provide any notice, and close your letter by thanking your employer for the opportunity. Keep it brief and to the point. Show your employer you respect their time. Don't go on a long, rambling rant about your personal issues or your problems with the company. Simply state that you're resigning your position, effective immediately, and leave it at that. Keep in mind that this letter could come back to haunt you, even if you already have another job lined up. You shouldn't put it past your boss to send a copy of the letter to your new employer, especially if you live and work in a relatively small town, or work in a close-knit industry. If you're not comfortable disclosing the reason you need to resign, you don't have to say anything specific. Remember that as an at-will employee, you can leave at any time for any reason at all, or for no reason. Mention any issues regarding accrued time off or your last paycheck. Some employers require you to come in for an exit interview when you accept your final paycheck. You should generally be open to follow any existing separation procedures, unless doing so would be impossible, for example, if you have to travel far away immediately. Proofread your letter carefully. When you've finished your letter, double and triple check it for spelling and grammatical errors. You want your last impression to be a good one, and typos or sloppy grammar won't do you any favors. Keep in mind that some people view the presence of typos as a sign of disrespect. You're signaling that you don't think they're worth the effort to produce the best work. After you've proofread your letter, print it off and sign it by hand. Make copies of your signed letters for your own records before you take them to your employer. Hand deliver your letter. If at all possible, you want to take the letter to your boss in person rather than mailing it. Mail does have the benefit of being able to later prove the letter was received. However, this benefit is outweighed by the difficulty of timing. When you speak with your boss, be as apologetic as possible. It can help to acknowledge that you understand how your leaving may put them in a bind. If you have a legitimate reason, talk about the situation. They may be able to help you more than they would if you said nothing. If you have any questions about your employer's separation procedures, now is the time to ask them. Depending on your position, you may want to offer to help out in the coming weeks or be available by phone or email to answer questions. Reach out to coworkers or direct supervisors you worked with closely, or with whom you had a strong rapport. You want to thank them personally and let them know you enjoyed working with them, so there are no hard feelings.